guys are new to the channel, you'd know, uh, or you wouldn't know, that I've had to replace the quarter panels on this car. The gold ones obviously aren't welded on just yet. Um, they're just screwed into place um, for trial fitment and to do all the rust repairs and stuff, get all the fitment right. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll uh, get dug into stripping these off the car. Um, and yeah, then we can start on the paint stripping process. Alright, so just for the video, uh, well this part of the video anyway, I'm just going to be stripping just this part of the quarter panel. So what we've got here is just some old uh, maxi stripper. Um, this is just like your home hardware store kind of stuff. Um, it works fine, it's not out of this world or anything like that. At the end of the day, we're going to be stripping off, um, you know, 45 or older year products. So, um, yeah, it's uh, not like we need to go too crazy with anything. Um, yeah, I find this stuff works fine for this older style paint. Um, but yeah, what I like to do first is we'll get this out of the way. Um, and this is just some, uh, some 40 grit sandpaper. So just like your board file sort of sandpaper. Um, use whatever type of sandpaper as long as it's something that's kind of coarse. Um, give it a good scratch up. All right, that should be enough. Now, the reason behind that is, is now that you've got all these sort of scratches sort of broken down into the surface, some of them are down to bare metal, um, it's gonna help get the paint stripper up under the paint. So yeah, it'll just work a little bit more effective. Um, some people like to throw plastic over their paint stripper. Um, for this sort of stuff, I don't really think it's that necessary because, um, you know, it's just, this is just an original acrylic paint. Um, it doesn't really need a whole lot to get into it. Um, if anything, it's more the red oxide. That's sort of the harder thing to get off, but I've found even really aggressive paint strippers won't even touch that. So um, yeah, I don't know what they used to put in that stuff, but must have been pretty good. Um, but yeah, the main thing, oh, if we can get some out. I did just give this a bit of a shake up. Um, it's probably a few years old, this tin, if it wants to come out. Come on. I will get you out of there. And yeah, just chuck it on hard, or well, not hard, heavy. Um. Oh, come on. If I can get it out, I'll show you a bit more what I like to do with this stuff. Because uh, it's probably already starting to work. I think this tin might have just about had it, I reckon. Might have sat around for too long. As long as you put it on reasonably thick, it should penetrate down into the paint. Um, like I said, the paint on this won't be too thick, so it should be pretty easy to take off. Um, won't take a whole lot to sort of get into it. Put a bit more on over here if we can.
All right, so like I said, some people like to put plastic or paper or whatever over that sort of stuff. Um, I don't really think it's that necessary. Um, I find it's a little bit easier actually when you don't. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll uh, leave this for a little bit and um, yeah, we'll get back to it. All right, so I've just left that for a couple of minutes, probably somewhere around the five to 10 mark. Um, as you can see, working all right you just got to sort of dig in there and that's already down to bare metal so yeah um, and basically with this stripper what I like to do is if you can sort of just move it around um, that's what I was trying to explain before um, but um, yeah because this stuff it'll just keep going until you neutralize it so I like to get sort of as much as possible out of um, out of a small amount yeah I just think that's uh, bit more of a cost effective way to use it. This has had most of the paint stripped off. So as you can see, it's mainly down to bare metal apart from a few spots. Um, obviously I haven't washed this down with the water yet, but yeah, that's all the paint stripper I've used. I've sort of just been moving it around in each different spot. Um, majority of that now would probably just be the paint because obviously there's not a whole lot of mess. Um, this is just the way I like to do it. I like to get a small uh, manageable amount and sort of just move it around spot to spot until it really starts becoming um, not as effective anymore. But um, yeah, as you can see, that's sort of uh, where I've gotten it to. Um, just finishing off just in the bumper recess. Not gonna get too carried away inside there because um, yeah, I'm obviously gonna wire wheel and stuff through here, but um, yeah. Obviously I've gotten rid of the paint stripper that was on the panel. I've cleaned it down with the water. Um, I ended up just using a bit of old scotch Bright. I think that might have actually had a little bit of dioxidine on it because it sort of left a bit of a haze on the uh, on the bare metal spots, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, I just scotched it down with a bit of water and then went over it with another wet rag. Um, and yeah, then it sort of just air dried. So yeah, I see a lot of people when they do their paint stripper, they'll um, you know they'll, they'll coat everything in paint stripper and they'll make a big mess of everything, and then they'll go and try and wash it down with thinners. Um, I don't agree with that one bit. Um, Water is the only way to neutralize the paint stripper correctly. Sure, you can get rid of it with, with the thinners, but to actually neutralize it, um, you know, you're gonna need to put water on it. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's uh, where we're at now. I'm gonna go ahead, probably won't do any filming of it, and cause you know, it's just a bit boring, but I'm gonna paint strip the rest of the quarter panel. And uh, yeah, I'll be with you guys very shortly. paint stripped the panel inside and out and I've washed it all down with water. I ended up ragging the water on first and then I took it outside and I hosed it all off so I could make sure I got all sort of the uh, all the bits and all the hard to get places. 
So this is where it's left now. Um, now you might think, oh, you can just go straight onto sanding, which you can. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I find works a little bit better and it saves your sanding discs. Um, if you just get some, some thinners or some gun wash, whatever you want to call it, um, really anything will sort of work as long as it's, you know, around near your thinners sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, you just give it a, a rub with some scotch Bright, and then it'll get rid of all of that sort of residue that's sort of left over from uh, the washing process and, um, and the paint stripper. So yeah, like I said, it's not necessary to do this. I just find it cuts down on sanding just a little bit. Um, as you can see, I'll, I'll give this one a little bit more of a rub. This cup's got a hole in it. That's all right. And rub him on there like that. Get our clean rag. And just like that, the panels, you know, 10 times, will be 10 times easier to clean up. So, um, yeah, I'll do that over the whole panel inside and out, and then I'll start the, uh, the sanding process or clean and strip and sanding. So the quarter panel's back on the car. Doesn't look too bad. Obviously, I still need to go through with the uh, clean up of all the surface rust and stuff that's sort of um, been lurking around. Um, but I'm gonna do that after I strip off all the paint off the driver side quarter panel, which is obviously still on the car. So yeah, I have to um, spin the car around so I can get that one off and um, yeah, I'll probably look at stripping that one back tomorrow morning. Tell you what, this thing right here makes moving these cars so bloody easy. I mean, I haven't got a whole lot of room in here. I mean, you know, this is just a, like a two car sort of spot in the garage, um, shed, whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, it's yeah really easy to move that body. So yeah, really happy with that. I'll just, um, finish tidying up for the night and then um, yeah probably lock up the shed and come out tomorrow morning make the other side look like that
So I've been away for a little while and my brother's been doing his painting and stuff in here of his wagon that he's doing just in acrylic. Um, so I've put one of these car covers on it. I have already deoxidized one of these quarters, so I'm not sure if you can see that underneath the car cover, but I'll show you in a little bit. But these car covers here, they are worth their weight in gold. Um, they're really good. I find these to be probably one of the better ones, um, opposed to like that style, because that sort of just filters through the dust and stuff. Um, but yeah, these car covers like, because if you have any dust or anything land on your bare metal, that's going to hold the moisture on the panel. So if you chuck one of these plastic car covers on it, you're going to eliminate that. Um, obviously, you're still going to have a bit of like breathable air underneath it. So like it's not going to be um, like sweating or anything under it like a lot of people think like with tarps and stuff like that that are, you know, sitting on cars outside or, you know, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I find these are really good. Um, yeah, they keep the overspray off, they keep the dust off, and uh, yeah. But anyway, that's, um, that's what, the, what the steel comes up like when it's deoxidized. That's just a very quick one. As you can see, it's still got rust from where the vinyl roof was sitting. A um, little bit around where the mouldings was as well. So yeah, like, I'm going to have to go over this with a little bit of blasting and then probably deoxidize it again. But um, yeah, just putting a, a phosphate coating on it just like that. Um, yeah, it'll save, um, you know, any sort of like serious flash rusting. It'll still have a little bit of rusting on it, but it won't be, um, you know, as bad if it was just left in bare metal. So, yeah, like I said, that's just what I find that works. Um, that was just a very quick one. Um, I probably didn't actually uh, neutralize it in a, an appropriate amount of time. So that's why it's got a bit of a, a goldy haze to it. I like it when they have just more of a blue on them. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's... Um, sort of what you get to and this is a side that hasn't got anything on it so I'll peel this one off so yeah you can tell straight away just from the color of the steel it's um yeah this has got more of like a, a matte sort of finish to it so yeah you can really see that phosphate coating on it um but yeah anyway I'll uh turn the car around I'll get this quarter panel off and um yeah I'll run you through the process of uh deoxidizing that all right, so this is the product that we're going to be using. Um, it's just the, the Protec metal conditioner. 9719119 is the product code. Obviously got our red scotch bright. And what we'll do is just put him up there. Oh, hang on. Just do that first. So get some of that on there. Start giving it a bit of a scrub. Now we're not going to try and get rid of all the rust out of this because some of it's pretty deep, especially around in these areas. Um, I'm going to have to blast those out. This is just to give it a bit of a phosphate coating to stop any uh, like fingerprints um, rusting away. All right, we'll just let that do its thing. We'll do the inside. Just hook that up. So I'm just going to spray the whole lot off with the hose and then rag it down as quickly as possible.
All right, in under 15 minutes, that's what we're left with. So that's got phosphate coating on it now. Everything's been neutralized. Yes, there is still rust here, but like I said, that stuff is sort of too much to get in with the, um, with the product that I'm using. So that'll get blasted along with all inside here, all around the window opening, inside the boot jam, that sort of thing, that'll all get blasted. Up under there will get blasted, but at the moment, the coating that's on this will hold that for pretty well, as long as I keep it clean, um, you know, for a fairly long time. Um, I've got stuff that's, you know, years old with this uh, coating on it. Um, and yeah, as long as it's kept dry, it's, uh, it stays relatively rust free. Just had the car outside for a little bit of a clean up in the shed. So um, yeah, I think that could probably wrap us up for this video guys. Hope you've sort of taken something from this and uh, yeah, you'll uh, see in the upcoming videos just how well the, um, how the phosphate coating that the dioxidine leaves will, um, will protect the steel and uh, yeah, on to the next thing. Just while I've got you guys here, I'll probably do a bit of a wheel and tire reveal um, just when I get this one up on the trolley, so um, yeah, be sure to check that one out. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Cheers.